so badly wrong in so many parts of Scotland. We're not seeing this sort of uh, issue, not in Wales, not in Northern Ireland, and not in England. Well, I think, firstly, um, the uh, government in Westminster has offered a, a reasonable settlement uh, to the refuge collectors in, in England, and I think they've been recognised for what they've done, they've been paid um, appropriately. That simply hasn't happened here in Scotland. The SNP government have uh, not provided the money that is required by local authorities, and um, I'm afraid the, the blame lies at the uh, door of the Scottish government, who have to fund uh, local government. They have failed to do that over a number of years, and it's now becoming very clear that this is a direct result of that lack of funding. It's a problem that is uh, appearing north of the border. Whenever there's a, a genuine concern of people in Scotland, the SNP seem to say that it's not their fault at all, that only with more control being given to Holyrood, with only with more control being given to Nicola Sturgeon, it would all be fine. And clearly, it's all the fault of Westminster. Does that argument carry much weight with you? Well, it, 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 it's an easy narrative, but it's actually a completely false narrative. Um, what we need to see is the Scottish Government actually using the power that they have already here in Scotland to help the people of Scotland. We're not seeing this only in regard to refuge collectors. We've seen um, social security powers being handed back to Westminster because the Scottish Government haven't been able to deal with them in an appropriate way. Um, we have a Scottish Government who likes to blame everybody but the people that should be blamed, which is themselves. It is the most remarkable situation. It reminds me of these scenes that we've seen so much uh, going back through archives of historical footage back in the winter of discontent, Trafalgar Square piled high with rubbish. Uh, that had some pretty profound political consequences. Of course, there was uh, a, a general election the, uh, the year after that winter or just following that winter. And of course, the incumbent government got turfed out and a new one got uh, put in. What are the chances of scandals like this, scandals like the rubbish being uh, left out on the streets, like the ferry fiasco that we saw, like the real issues with educational standards in Scotland as well? Why don't they seem to be having electoral consequences? Well, I think it will start. I think the narrative is building up there. I think we've seen a number of issues which the Scottish Government have completely failed on. Um, as you've mentioned, the ferries, uh, we've seen the gap for roads in education, the exam results are going in the wrong direction. And now we've seen the, simply the lack of action in regard to that. And I think people in Scotland are waking up to see that this is not a, a Westminster issue, that it's all to do with Scottish Government. All the powers the Scottish Government have, they are simply failing to provide the services that people want uh, for themselves and for their families, whether it's education, local authority, health, transport. We fail, fail, fail. And I think they will start to pay that price. I think people are now waking up to realise that actually Nicola Sturgeon has failed the people of Scotland over and over again.